tradition that goes back many years. This all started a little bit as uh, back in the olden days when we used to race dinosaurs. My friend Beth, who did PR for some teams, it sort of became a thing like, hey, at midnight, let's meet and we'll get like um, cinnamon rolls. And it was easy to find each other because there was no, there weren't a lot of people here. And it kind of became a joke because it's like, hey, I see you, you're 100 yards away, hey, let's, let's get cinnamon rolls. And um, that's where this came from. Sadly, Beth is not here, she, she's in Arizona. But, um, and still, still one of our, you know, into cars. But this is all about friendships and relationships, and that's where this came from. Um, we have three good friends here with us today, so we'll, uh, who again, relationships have been with us for a very long time. Andy Hollis, if you've read our tire tests, which are very popular, so thank you for reading them. So Andy has some special uh, uh, teaser news for later, but been, Andy's worked with us for a very long time. Adam Saul on the end, Adam is here. Adam is representing um, Mercedes AMG. And again, Adam is someone we worked with when we first tried to do one of these tours semi-formal. Of course, I had no plan, and people showed up. And it's like, when you throw a party, people show up, and you're like, oh, I didn't make plans. I got to figure something out. And I saw Adam, and I'm like, uh, Adam, where can I take people? But uh, Adam was working for the Speedway? Uh, Grand, Am. Grand Am, which Grand Am. became EMSA. And Adam graciously said, here, get in that elevator, go up, and you can watch the, uh, the radio feed. And it was in Spanish language, and I was in Spanish, and no one cared, and it was fun. And that was, I want to say it was two years ago, but really it was probably like a two plus a zero after it. Oh, at least. And so, um, but yeah, Adam, again, relationships, Adam's an old friend. In the middle, we have someone who actually used to write for Grassroots Motorsports. We were just talking about this. So there is a future in journalism, and that future is you can become president of IMSA. So, <laughs> John Dewey, thank you. We were just reminiscing the story, one of the stories John did, the sidebar was by Lee Grimes, who is at Coney, who's another old friend of ours. Um, his son Spencer was here earlier. But again, uh, I don't want to guess how long ago it was. It was in the, Oh, okay, I was gonna say the days of film. So I know where that picture is. We were talking, I had an RX-7, it was about Nelson Ledges, um, 24 hours, again, back to endurance racing. And that's sort of this all comes around. It's our relationships and friendships. So you are our friends. Um, one of our stated goals is we're the first one to the sports car world, which basically means we were on the same side of it, uh, as you guys. Maybe our role decks is a little bit, has some other people in it. So I need to thank everyone for coming today. And um, I was going to ask some questions to our guests, and then we'll do Q&A. And um, Adam has a, a race report to, to file. John, I think, has a race to run. <laughs> Andy has to get sleep now. Um, he has a bet to get in. No, so, so a little bit of housekeeping. We're going to do some um, questions here. We'll take questions from you all. Um, we're going to go for a stroll through the path, through the garages where they're working on cars. So we're going to go out, kind of do a 180, come back. And then we're going to go visit, um, watch them change tires, which is always exciting. Everyone always likes that. And then Tom was saying, hey, we'll take everyone up into the, um, the grandstands for those who are, are, uh, are up for late. And also, um, so. Who to follow? Um, I think we have a flag. We have Nicole who has a flag. And I also need to thank our staff. So we have Nicole who has the flag and <laughs> makes stuff happen. We have Tom who is over somewhere. Where's Tom? There's Tom. Uh, we have uh, Tom um, event department. So if you're happy with the event, thank Tom. If you're not happy, thank, uh, let me know. And let him get the good news, and, and I'll, hand, I'll deal with any, anything you're not happy with. Um, we have J.A. from Editorial. J.A. is here as well. Raise your hand, J.A. There you are. J.A. is in the back. We have Chris. Our video editor is uh, taking pictures and video. And I think that's it that for our stack, pretty much, right? And I also need to thank um, the fifth Beatle, no, my, my wife. Uh, for all of you who are tired because you've been walking a lot today and doing a lot of steps, um, this morning, before I even left to come here, she already ran ten and a half miles. So, <laughs> so she's about to sit on the floor. So if you're tired, um, you could have been out pounding the pavement with my wife this morning while the dog and I were upstairs um, keeping the bed bed warm. And oh, thank you. So I want to get some questions real quick. Um, I think the three big letters. I'm going to start with John. The big news this week, obviously, is GTP, which for a lot of us is. 
kind of important letters. I, I was there at Road Atlanta when they ran with, you know, back in the day. So what does the return of GTP mean to him? Well, first of all, this is incredible. This is almost what the driver's meeting looked like this morning in this room. So I have to commend all of you, first of all, for your passion, for your participation in this event. And I am just blown away and so grateful that you took time to come out here and enjoy the event, but participate in this. So give yourselves a round of applause. Awesome. Much like David, I grew up in that GTP era, um, was watching the Rolex 24 in 1979 when I was in Chicago on a cold winter's night. Um, but in 1981, the first GTP car uh, was launched, the first official GTP car. That was a, a BMW powered March. And the real vision around GTP was to engage auto manufacturers in running uh, top category cars. There was plenty of GT cars that were already running. But GTP was that moment in time, I think, to allow auto manufacturers to brand a prototype race for overall wins, uh, tell their brand story, and maybe utilize the GTP platform about uh, to tell a story about what's possible down the road. And it really took off, uh, as, as anyone who knows the history of IMSA, um, you know, 82, 83, 84, uh, it really took off. Porsche 962s were uh, all over the place uh, as customer cars and factory efforts, if you will. Um, but then they all started coming. Nissan brought one. Um, if you go out in the fan zone, I think the Corvette GTP cars is out there that Hendrick Motorsports ran. Um, and then Toyota came, and Mazda came, and the place was uh, a buzz with uh, top category manufacturers plus customers. And that's really what we wanted to recreate, that same feeling. But the manufacturers after DPI were asking us what's next, and uh, by integrating uh, a single source hybrid system. Uh, that's a, a critical element for them to tell their brand and, and overall powertrain story. Um, to bring us a, a renewable fuel that we launched in competition this weekend. We're really proud of that. And, um, and Michelin, of course, uh, our tire partner has reduced tire usage in this race by a third uh, that we used last year. So they, they brought a double stint tire uh, for the GTP cars, and overall we've reduced tire reduction. So um, it's it's sort of GP, GTP 2.0 from the what was the golden era of IMSA, and I think uh, the, the manufacturers have spoken. The cars are stunning. Um, if you've gotten up close or even seen a photo of them, the design teams have done a remarkable job uh, to have them look the brand. So I, I think they're the ultimate expression of each of the brands. And, and you mentioned the hybrid, which is obviously the big news. In a, can we get the elevator speech? What what does that mean? And how do they? How does this differ from the cars we saw from last year? Yeah. So DPI was uh, make your make, make your own uh, uh, aerodynamic uh, design styling cues. Bring an engine of your choice, and uh, essentially let's go racing. Um, now it's extra design opportunities in the side pods. Uh, bring your engine of choice, and then we're going to bolt on a single source hybrid uh, system, an electric motor from Bosch. In the passenger seat is a, a battery from WAE, Williams, and it's all housed in the, a case by x -Track. And um, originally we were thinking about a push to pass, but this is uh, constant power, and it's about another um, 70 horsepower. Um, constant all the time and uh, couple that with 630 horsepower uh, ice engine it's uh, they're, they're going pretty quick yeah and um, so talking about pace back in the olden times this was an endurance race and then it kind of became a 24-hour sprint race everyone was saying are we still in the day like where are we these days do you think well I think anytime you launch a new platform um, there's learnings there's hesitancy uh, the teams, the, the manufacturers didn't get as much testing as they, as they would like. And I think if this was a year from now, they'd still say they didn't get enough testing. But um, I think, um, you know, people are taking a different approach probably a little bit. I, don't, I mean, I don't think they're holding back, to be honest. 
but um, I think they are being conservative, I would suggest. Although, on some of the restarts, you would think otherwise, as Castro Novus locked them up into one and, and spot. <laughs> and, and you did mention testing, so was anyone here for the Roar last week? Next week, the rest of you, or next year, you need to join us. That, um, for those of, I mean, the rest of us were here, it, you got to see the cars, you got to see, it was, you got to see everything up close. And it went, it used to be testing, it would be like me and John and a few other people. And this year we had trouble finding parking. So if you do want to get another shot at seeing the cars, assuming there'll be a roar next year, please come out. And also, there's a whole, uh, the whole season we need to get to. No doubt. How many first time ever at the Rolex 24 in the room? Ah, that is awesome. So next year, uh, when you do come back for the Roar, uh, bring somebody else that's never been because um, that, that's what we're all, all, everyone in this room is an enthusiast. And uh, I think it's incumbent on us to identify and bring that next generation along. So thank, thank you so much for coming along. Yeah, thank you. And actually that leads into something I want to ask John. Um, a lot of us who were on staff, um, a joke from JG, who was actually at home probably sleeping because he was taking one golden tickets all day. JG also likes to joke that, you know, we're a reader. Like I said, we're, we're our readers. We all come from the sport. I was autocrossing. I was working races and everything before I came to work here. And John comes from that as well. John's background, most of you know he was with, with Mazda for many years. But also working corners. Like, yes, John seems the president, but John has, can wave a flag. And can you kind of explain how can we get more involved in all this? Like, Hopefully everyone, I know a lot of our readers know, but I want everyone to realize we can get on the other side of the fence pretty pretty easily these days. Yeah, that's, that's frankly all I wanted. And I wake up every day still trying to remember what it felt like to want to be part of the action, uh, even though I have this incredible opportunity to be part of the action. But uh, I, I suggest if you're not a member of SCCA or NASA, uh, you should join. Um, you should come out and and learn about being a corner marshal. I think that's the best place to watch uh, one of these races at the apex of some of these corners. Um, you gotta learn how to flag if you don't already know, but tremendous opportunity. I think SCCA's done an amazing job with Track Night in America. If you haven't been to one of those, I think you ought to look it up and find one that's close and get an opportunity to take your own road car out on the track and learn some basics about braking and, and uh, all the stuff that this guy does in, in tire testing, but some of the basics that give you an opportunity to hone, hone your driving skills. And then if you're really serious, there's a uh, spec Miata. <laughs> John knows about it. And actually speaking of that, the, um, I want to say April, late April, SCC will be here at Daytona. And it's a full weekend. It's racing, track in America, and autocross. So if you, and a school, I believe, a driver's school. So if you want to get involved, easy way to get involved. If you like the history of the sport, small plug for HSR. Oh, um, yes. Last year, IMSA uh, purchased uh, HSR, became partners, and we're thrilled to have that as part of our portfolio to celebrate the history while we're trying to create the next chapter of history. So I want to ask Adam a question, because I know Adam also has to go file race reports. Um, Adam is here representing Mercedes-Benz AMG, or Mercedes AMG, who we don't want to jinx anything, but the cars look good out there. A big part, and also John mentioned um, IMSA history, whether it's now or GT or back in the day, up, yeah. you had uh, factory programs and you had customer programs. So today we have factory programs. Actually, we're showing the Corvette with factory program. But Adam, how does it work on your end, which is more is customer driven programs? Yeah, it's definitely uh, the heartbeat of it. Uh, and I want to talk about GTP in a second, too, just to uh, talk about my take on. Kind of the recreation of the category, if that's okay. But uh, customer racing is really a, a backbone of the of the gentleman component. I think there's a, a recognition and understanding that without the what we call the sportsman racer, uh, call them AMs, which is short for amateur, but we never call them amateurs because a guy like Ben Keating is hardly an amateur, even though he doesn't make his living uh, in in motorsports. But uh, they've always been at the heart of our sport. So to preserve it. Uh, some great categories have been created across the sanctioning bodies. I think GTD has nailed it 
uh, since its introduction in 2014. It's been absolutely perfect. And you see the manufacturers develop customer programs, even the point where they're the name. We're Mercedes AMG Motorsport Customer Racing. Audi, I believe, had it in their name as well. And it, it just recognizes the fact that to go at this level of racing, you know, it doesn't start, like I said to David earlier, with chalk marks on your floor and you build your own car and come on out. There's places for that, obviously, and it's great, and, and we love it. But to race at this level and be out here against these incredible, now rocket-powered, you know, hybrid cars, it's made, you need to have a good machine underneath you. So uh, it's really taken off. AMG just celebrated their 10th anniversary of the customer racing on a global scale, which is significant, but compared to Porsche, which has been doing it for nearly 50 years, uh, they have their own, their own division here in America. BMW, they've been doing it for a long time. And it's really the, heart, uh, you know, the heartbeat of it. And you develop good partners with a lot of great teams who in turn build their, their business model off it too. So it, 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 it openly embraces the fact that it's a business that you'd have to have a good business proposition for both the manufacturer and your customers because this isn't cheap to do. But if you do it right and you develop a true partnership, um, it works out really well. And uh, we're proud of our success and hopefully we'll be even prouder come uh, 1.40 tomorrow, uh, tomorrow afternoon. But I call it an atom bomb if I say too much, and I don't want to say too much, but uh, we're pretty so, happy right now, so we hope to continue. All these cars are purchased, they're all homologated. Exactly. And we were talking earlier, how much, back in the olden times, after every race, you had an engine shop, you had an engine program, what is the engine life of the of your current GT car? It's it's like years. These engines in the, in the RAMGs, and I probably, John would know this better, I would probably, most of the cars, they don't even change them, they might give them a look, but they will run the entire season and partially in the next season and cover all your testing. So I don't know what, what the, the exact mileage is on them, it's incredible. They come built, on the AMGs it's really neat because you lift the hood and there's a nice little plaque and it, it says who, what AMG engineer handcrafted your engine? And it's usually a name like you know, you know Sven Mueller or something like that. But it's 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 really it's really cool. You can find out the guy who actually built one. And out in uh, Pebble Beach a couple of years ago, we brought one of those technicians out. And he actually built an engine throughout the show. Yeah, he showed up with uh, literally boxes. And as the day went on, he built this engine, you know, sitting, yeah, live and put together a, a full. I think it was a 6.3 liter like we run right now. Uh, these are V8-powered Mercedes out there, which actually is not the engine that comes in the car. It comes with the, uh, the twin-turbo uh, engine, which ironically is in the Aston Martin. They run our engine in that car. So they're running the current engine. We, uh, we unveiled this program in Daytona, and it felt right. I mean, when, they, when we heard it go the first time in our first test in 2016, uh, the writers said, wow, it sounds like a, a stock car run around Daytona. So it's pretty cool. We like, we like the roar. And we're already, we're already developing the next car. These cars are at the end of their cycle. They're still homologated will be for, uh, I think it's different years for the GT3 and GT4 models. Uh, but they're not in production anywhere either, but there's hundreds of them around the world. And that's another good point. The customer program, it, it's, it's stronghold is in Europe, but it's also in uh, Asia, a huge in Australia, and come around. It, it's successful, it really works well. And that kind of goes back to the, the business. This is a, yes, it's fun, but it's a business. All these cars are homologated, so with Mercedes, it could be GT3 or GT4. When, it, if it, when a team is done with one, they can sell it, and it might go to Europe, might go to Asia, might go to the Middle East, and still run under pretty much the same rules, probably different tires, and that's about it. <coughs> but back in the olden times, teams would build cars, and then at the end of the season, it was worth like pennies on the dollar. And now the cars do have some value, so like people kind of go, they cost that much new. It's like, yes, but a fully developed car, all the electronics are handled, and when you're done with it, there, there's still some value in the cars. And that goes for everything you've seen, the, the TCR cars, the GT4 cars, GT3 cars, LMP, it's all homologated, but there are online places you can look and see these cars for sale. And well, in, in HSR, and I'm lucky enough to do contemporary racing with Mercedes AMG and a few other clients, but I also am lucky enough to handle historic sports car racings, PR. I, was, I got a young start, so I was able to, I like HSR because you go there and you're immediately 15 years younger, uh, walking in the gate because, uh, you know, to do what they do, uh, a little bit older. So, yeah, if you're, if you're in your 50s, you're a kid, so it's kind of fun. But the, to see these 72-year-olds out there running old Audi R8 LMPs and, like, really hanging it out there, it's amazing. But uh, we had an 85-year-old Ken Buck, Kenny Buck, uh, SCCA driver and Trans Ambler, 85, and he was here at the Classic 24 
finished second with his kid running around. So he did a fantastic job. But uh, we have a five-year rule in HSR, and our GT Modern Class GTM is very popular. And you'll see a lot of a lot of the same cars uh, that have raced here just recently that are now eligible to race in HSR. It's really good racing. It creates a lot of good racing. So. Yeah, actually, we, we were here for HSR um, Daytona, which is sponsored by by IMSA. Is another weekend added to your schedule. You can get up close to the cars. They run through the night. They run groups, so it's not the same cars running for 24 hours, but it's racing for 24 hours. So it's a little bit easier on the team. You don't have to worry about refueling. You don't need a giant tire budget. But it's still really cool cars running at two in the morning, and it is cars we saw race whether it's five years ago or 20 years ago, um, and that happens here. Usually, it's traditionally in November. It's the same for this year, I believe. Yeah, it's uh, it's usually uh, uh, well, it was October this year or early November, yeah. but it, it, it's working out. But it will have GTP cars there too, which kind of brings me back to the to the big topic. I was lucky enough to go to work for IMSA in 1989 as a young man. It was my career goal to work for IMSA. I loved it as a kid, just like John. I grew, I grew up going to races, but IMSA was my thing. And lucky me, the minute I went into the business, IMSA's PR guy retired and handpicked me at 24 years old to run IMSA. So I, I was running not just part of the PR department, I kind of was the PR department at 24. And we were so young we didn't know it. Our president was Mark Raffoff, who's still with the organization. The, yeah, the award-winning Mark Raffoff, he just won the Phil Hill Award from the RRDC the other day. He was 33 years old. John's only 35. You know, but, but we were so young and we were out there and there was like, all these manufacturers, Nissan had two factory cars, Jaguar, Toyota, Mazda was coming on to reach the culmination of their program at that time. And it was so successful. And in 89, um, that was my first race, and I worked it again in 90. And we had crowds, huge crowds then. And face it, we had tobacco money back then, it was Camel, and they promoted the heck out of it. We did media tours. So we had the, they had the crowds there. I'm happy to say the crowd this weekend is the biggest, if not the biggest ever, but it's definitely the biggest I've seen. Yeah, it's bigger than those crowds back then from there. So put the hands together, people coming on. It was a little political before the merger, you know, back in the early part of this century. You know, we had Grand Am, ALMS, and thank God common sense prevailed when we came together. But there was a lot of boasting back then about how it's the biggest ever. And I was like, no, it's not. It's not even close. No question. It's, it's huge. Well, you're part of it. This has got to be a record. Is this a record, Dave? Is this your biggest crowd ever? Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we haven't had this many people. Yeah, this is our biggest crowd ever. So thank you for coming. Record setting. Um, you help us work on our public speaking skills. So, uh, John mentioned tires, um, which is the biggest part of motorsports, whether you're racing here, whether you're racing around pylons. We've done a lot of tire tests with Andy. We have several, we have more coming up. We have more we've been discussing. The tire tests, when we put them online, it's always one, our most popular item. So thank you. Apparently you guys, you all love tire tests. We like making them because we use tires as well. And I'm gonna run the right tires. I was wondering if Andy wants to give us a sneak peek without giving anything away about what we're working on. So, yeah, I, I figured I'd use this as a great opportunity to, there's a little buzz going around the community right now, partially because we slipped up and let something out that we weren't supposed to, um, and then we retracted it really quickly, but a few people saw it and word went around and things like that. Um, meanwhile, the February I issue came out online first, and it's actually, I think, has everybody seen their February issue yet in your mailbox? Uh, it's actually the one we have that we're giving away. We have a different cover on it down there. Um, and you're familiar with the uh, ultimate track tire guide that we put out, which has a summary. Anybody notice anything different, a big change in there for something? Anybody see anything? No? Do you look under Nankang, under the CRS? You see a little update on that? So next month's issue, look for a huge set of testing that I did back in the fall on that. Uh, the tires will be available in about a month, which is why we were holding off on releasing the information, because you couldn't act on it. Um, so how many people here run track days, time trials, um, on 200 treadwear street tires, Enduros, that kind of stuff? How would you like a tire that's as fast as the fastest ones that are out there, yet is consistent across long sessions, and is as durable as the kind of Enduro 200s, all in one tire? And at a fair price. At a fair price. Yeah, you take my money, please. Yes, and in a lot of sizes. I mean, I'm super excited about this yeah. tire. And I, I get excited about tires, but 
most of the time, it, you know, I'm a hard sell on stuff. And they're, and by the way, they're on my white Miata that's uh, the project car that's sitting over in the GRM booth right now. And they're sitting there hiding in plain sight. Been on the car the whole weekend and all like that. Nobody has said a word about it because they look like the existing Nankang CRS. It's just an update on the tire, but it may as well be a completely new tire. Everything looks the same on the outside, but it is a completely new tire. Um, so anyway, it literally is as fast as the Yokohama A052 um, on you know in a time trial situation. It'll do that throughout an entire session. Um, it'll last as long as like a Falcon RT660 level of, so if you're doing Enduros, it'll easily do an eight hour Enduro. Um, so they're, they're pretty magic tires. The only thing about it is probably not your best autocross tire because it needs a little bit of heat to get going. Um, so uh, on the other hand, if you're in Texas like I am in autocross, you're gonna, <laughs> you don't care about getting heat, you got plenty of heat. Um, so anyway, watch for that next month. Super excited about that. Um, and then uh, go buy some. <laughs> and, and that goes back to the whole partners. We're, we're lucky we have these companies that support us, whether it's Mercedes making turnkey race cars, tire companies, and a lot of that does go back to relationships. Um, was, there was a tire company uh, 15 years ago that took us to lunch. We took, or we took, we took one to Chili's. It was a fancy lunch. They took a lot of notes, and then about six months later, they're like, here's a tire that came out of the lunch. And it's actually a very popular track tire to this day. So it goes back to relationships. What I want to do before we go out, I want to do um, questions from, from you all. We, we have...